So for those of you who are not ancient veterans of the internet, I'll go ahead and give you a refresher, and that is for years and years, our queen, Jackie Ina, was making this video at the end of every year, and honestly, go back and watch all of them, they're a scream, but they were called trends we're going to leave in this year, you know, things that we just don't want to carry into the next year, and she got, frankly, I think, just exhausted of them, and at one point she was like, I'm giving this concept away. Whoever wants to do it, treat it like a tag, whatever. And so the last couple of years I've been doing it because I am the main character of my own plot at all times, and so I was like, obviously she's speaking specifically to me. Gaggy, 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 gaggy. So yeah, I think this is the second or third year, I'm not sure, that we've been doing this. And this time I decided to pull y'all. I went on my Instagram because I am not the, not just the creator, but the curator of all things in that sense. And I wanted to know what was making you itch? What was crawling up your spine and driving you crazy? And we all feel that sense of renewal as we go into the new year. I think there's a lot of stuff where we're just like, ooh, maybe I won't have to do this anymore. Maybe I won't have to see this anymore on my social media feeds and y'all came through. I put a prompt on my on my Instagram stories as I always do. If you're not following me on Instagram, it's at heykhaki. Yeah, I'm going to open these up and we are going to chat about some of the main overarching ideas because let me just say, you covered every idea that I had and then some. So let's go ahead and jump in. Let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, first of all, first of all, y'all apparently hate everything cropped. I will say, back when I was a kid, everything was shaped in this like wide boxy way that was never my body type. I am very long in the torso and I've always just been very gangly. And I always was driven nuts by the implication of certain body shapes like darts or things being kind of bell shaped, you know, in shirts mainly. And the way that like, the, when I put those on, it looked like someone had just taken paper dolls and put it on my body. Like this is not the shape of my body. And so I get that frustration where there are shapes that are in style that you just see everywhere and you feel like they've kind of ruined the thing because you liked it. But if there was only just like this much more shirt or if it was like this much narrow or whatever. And I totally get that, but I have to disagree on the cropped everything thing because I am in my hot mom era. I have, you know, I'm 35, I am done having kids, and I really love the way that crop tops look. I love the way that they feel, they make me feel sexy, especially because I am kind of a boyish body type, and so I love something that has just kind of like this crew neck, otherwise pretty boyish t-shirt vibe, and then someone just like hacks it off halfway through the middle. Like, I've been cropping all of my hoodies, I've been cropping everything. I'm done wearing oversized sweaters that go past my hips. It makes me feel like just, I'm wearing dress up clothes. You know what I mean? Like a little kid wearing her mom's like old dress up clothes or something. I love wearing these things that kind of are like a cheeky shape. And I understand that's not for everybody, but I have to depart from the general consensus that everyone's sick of cropped things because I personally adore them. This is the one that has been like, the main reason that I wanted to make this video, the main answer, and it is this clean girl trend. We never really talked about this on my channel. I think I alluded to it maybe once, but I think that Charlotte Parler, the skinfluencer on Instagram, did the best job of unpacking this as far as just like what I saw, and that is this idea that like you can wear your hair slicked back, you can wear hoops, you can wear minimal makeup, you can be chapstick and mascara Twitter, but calling it a clean girl trend is problematic because it is basically, this is my understanding at least, feel free to elaborate in the comments, I am not the knower and holder of all knowledge, but that it is borrowing a trend, a, a, not even a trend, an aesthetic from black culture and from Latinx culture of women who were told that their hair was dirty, abnormal, unconventional, and you know, had to wear it a certain way, or a woman who's between protective styles or something like that. And that being a look that's considered kind of a means to an end for black and brown people until Hailey Bieber shows up, who I was talking to a creator called My Skintrist on, on Instagram, and I have to quote her, and what she said was so funny. She is the queen of claiming to be the first at everything. 
She is, and she has an extra grind on Hailey Bieber, but so do I, and we'll get to that in a bit. But absolutely, this idea of like slicking your hair back and putting on hoops, it's a trend that you can borrow from and call it clean girl. If you're white, like that's super problematic because you're saying that basically it's been dirty, the same way we talked about clean versus dirty. It's been dirty up until white girls co-opted it and now it's clean, like Ugh! You know, like you can do it, you just can't call it that. And again, I am a student just as anyone else is of like, you know, etymology, especially like current cultural etymology and things like that and where our style references come from and stuff. Like I don't claim to know everything, but that's my understanding of it. And like I, y'all see it all the time. I'm a huge fan of slicking my hair back. I wear, I wear it like this all the time because it's super easy. And then if I want to feel feminine, you know, I put on, a, well, I put on a lot of makeup a lot of the time, you know, to feel feminine. And then I love a big pair of earrings and this is just kind of a look I've done for a long time, especially as I was growing my hair on things like that. But that's the thing is it's only problematic if you are drawing the connotation of it being a trend that is clean because it was co-opted by white people. Oh, and this wasn't in here actually. This I think was the one thing that y'all didn't mention, but I don't want to hear about Kanye West ever again. Full stop. pH adjusters came up a lot. I kind of feel like this was something that I had mentioned pretty recently and so it was topical, but I totally agree. I think that pH adjusters are like this little grenade <laughs> in makeup that you thought you were otherwise going to love. So I did get a little bit of pushback in the comments when I talked about the pH adjuster ingredient in the Oma by Sharon C. Lip Tints that I tried on Friday in Friday's video. And some people just said like, like it turns a really beautiful color on me. I don't see a pH adjuster in it. But other people said, I, you know, I understand that you're very sensitive to these kinds of things and you, you know, have a, a sense for color and all that stuff. And I totally understand if it bugs you because that's the thing is there are brands that put like a tiny bit of it in there. And there are a lot of different ingredients that do it. And I don't know what they all are. I have Googled it to death and I can't figure out which ones they are. So some people have left it in my comments that it's like red seven or red 33 or something like that that does it. But I don't know for sure. So the ingredients themselves, the group of ingredients are called anthocyanins. Yes, anthocyanins. And essentially they have the, just a reactive quality to the pH. So it's like if something's wet or, you know, like your skin's pH or whatever, and it's going to always kind of turn some persuasion of like that beet stained hot pink. It's kind of what's happening on my lips right now, which makes me think since this is the first time that I've ever worn this, that maybe there's a little bit of it in this Victoria Beckham uh, Bitten Lip Tint. I don't know, but all that to say, it turns one color. And that can drive a lot of people crazy, especially when somebody like Winky Lux puts out an entire line of clear lipsticks that, you know, have the parlor trick of changing colors. But like, if you watched Tati's channel way, 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 way back in the day, she did one where she bought the entire line from Winky Lux. And as she was applying them, she just had this like, increasing disappointment, realizing that every single one of them turned the same color. And like, you can't unsee that. You can't unthink that. And I'm sorry, like they are all like that. And it's not adaptive. That's the thing is it's kind of false advertising because they say that it's adaptive. It's going to customize to your skin tone. That's not what it does. It turns, you know, bright berry pink, period. And it's like, yeah, that might look different on everybody, but it's still the same color. And I think that it's kind of a gimmick that it, it either works for you or it doesn't, and we don't want it in everything, so. I agree, or at least disclose it. The obsession with Charlotte Tilbury. I think that this is really funny because I kinda, yeah, especially, and we will also get into TikTok. That's a huge one. Like a lot of people just commented TikTok. And I think that this resurgence of so many trends that again, us olds on the internet, and I mean that in a good way. We are veterans, we're legacy. We are the, the, the generation on the internet who has already seen one revolution of it all come around, and now we're seeing it all come back again. But unlike previous generations, like our parents' generations, we're not having to wait 30 years to watch a trend come back around where we're just like my mother watching me in like third grade being like, I wanna wear platform shoes. And she was just like the seventies, really? But it was like the nineties, you know? No, these things come back within like 10 years. And so here we are redoing everything. Like, you know, the fact that Indie Sleaze is trying to come back, I'm like, 
I still have some of my stuff from there. You know, like, we're not even fully out of that. We just have slightly better quality to our photos, you know, or we post one instead of the entire night. But watching these things recirculate and come back on TikTok and all the 17 year olds be excited about shellacking themselves with makeup Jaclyn Hill style or like rediscovering Clinique Black Honey or finding Charlotte Tilbury's light ones and being like, OMG, fine. But like, can that be in its own category? Can it just like live there and us sit back and go, okay, been there, done that, like let's move forward. And if like let's move forward means that we're not talking about trends, that's fine with me. Like the things that I love are kind of things that have been around a long time. Like coming to find out that Chanel Sublimage Le Temps has been around for a very long time was both unsurprising to me and comforting to me where I was just like, oh, I stumbled on something that is beautiful and has existed for a long time. And like, maybe we're not in the business of creating brand new trends all the time. And maybe we should stop fixating on those things and just drill down to the things that we really enjoy and use them, you know? And like, Yes, my collection is always going to be encyclopedic because I do want to understand if better things arise, but that's not the kind of consumption that I encourage. And I do think that TikTok, the way that they encourage new, 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 also is like bringing back this idea of just like consume, consume, consume in a way that I just, I feel like we already, we already transcended a little bit. So. Yeah, Charlotte Tilbury is the, the just the, the tip of the iceberg, but I think that Charlotte Tilbury is worth the discussion because it's always been, in my opinion, five to ten dollars overpriced. Like more than it more than what I think that it's worth. Little quads being fifty-three dollars. They should be forty-two dollars. You know? I don't care about inflation. Like those things just, they're pretty, but they're not worth that. And I am a labels person, okay? I, I mean, I'm not out buying like Chanel bags or something, but I do enjoy the finest things that I feel comfortable affording. You know, I'm a, I've been called a snob and like, I don't know, my best friend before she knew me wrote it next to my face in the yearbook when we were in like second grade, okay? People have always called me a snob. If the shoe fits, meh, you know? But like, I still have limitations as to just believing that something is good because it has a high price on it. And like some of Charlotte Tilbury stuff is good and some of it's just not. And I feel like we entertain more, I mean, honestly, I feel the same way about Chanel. We entertain more of that makeup as is it exquisite because the price point's so high instead of calling it what it is and that is hit or miss. <laughs> low rise jeans, okay, like yes, absolutely. I think I've had nightmares about low rise jeans coming back. Right now I am wearing a pair of Mara Hoffman Monty pants and they are high waisted, loose fitting, kind of like skater boy trousers with pleats. They look like I bought them at Goodwill and I got them very on sale, don't worry. But I proudly do give my money to Mara Hoffman because she proudly pays a living wage. But either way, I am with you on it. I am about comfort. I don't have the patience to worry when I bend over to pick up my child whether my butt crack is gonna come out of my pants We've graduated past that, okay? And it is the stuff of nightmares at this point and I'm not here for it. Plus, plus, I think that it is very body exclusive, okay? Like low rise jeans as a trend, I honestly think that like that accounts for a humongous part of my like body dysmorphia issues growing up because it shows such an enormous part of your body that is one of the most maligned parts of every woman's body. And that is that womb area because it's so subject to change. Everything that changes in a woman's body changes that part of your body. I'm sorry. like. 
you shouldn't be forced by trends or anything else to put that on display. I know I just talked about crop tops, but girl, my crop tops show my ribs, okay? It's like above the belly button pants or leggings and then crop top right here, okay? Like we're talking about like this much of my rib cage. And I'm like, I'm so sassy. I'm so current. Look at me. I'm a hot mom. But like the crop top and the low rise jeans, that is body dysmorphia waiting to happen. You're gonna look at yourself in the mirror. I would look at myself in the mirror and be like, oh God, when did I become such a monster? You know, it's just not fair. It's like walking around in a bikini all the time. That's awful. No, no. Okay, I got a lot of responses about bleached eyebrows. You know what? I, the disclaimer that I'm not sure that I made in the beginning that I meant to make, do whatever you want. I think that no eyebrows and bleached eyebrows, the people who do that are doing it because it looks haunting, okay? And I'm here for that. I'm here for people being like, I want to disrupt your perception of beauty, okay? Maybe pretty isn't my goal, but I am a fan of the bleached eyebrow. I am a fan of the shaved off eyebrow. I am a fan of using something like your eyebrows to alter your look because it's always been something to me that like seems immovable. Uh, granted, we plucked the living daylights out of them and I'm very, very grateful that they grew back with, you know, such reckless abandon for me. They were just like, screw you, you're Italian, we're having eyebrows, we're clawing ourselves back. Some people haven't been so lucky and, you know, they have to draw their eyebrows on and it's a whole project. But like, aside from that, taking control and saying, I don't want eyebrows? Like, I don't know. I think there's something kind of deliberately insane about it. Like it's it's unhinged in the best way as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, so it's a toxic wellness culture. We had just talked about that in my Tati video that I just did talking about her wellness journey. The comments on that were very illuminating, but I pinned one that I found, found to be the most important to me and why I made the video. And it was from someone who watched Tati's video and then watched my video and was very honest about the fact that she had been taken in by Tati's very illustrative language and thought, this is a referendum on me. I shouldn't eat Cheetos or Doritos. I should be living like Tati. And that like breaking that spell was very helpful for them. And that was all I was intending to do. Do I think that we are actually going to leave toxic wellness culture in 2022? Absolutely not. No. No, because I think that there are always going to be people who want control and that's where it comes from. And I don't think that that's like a weakness of the human spirit. I think that we're just always trying to find a better answer for ourselves. And it's about sharing that kind of knowledge inside a very, very like elaborate web of caveats of saying like, this is very subjective, very subjective, very subjective. Like, you know, and, and just taking everything with a gigantic block of salt. Ah! Greenwashed refill systems that are so much plastic and go into more plastic. Yeah! I agree. And this is something that really like ground my gears back in 2019 when I was doing Clean Routine 2019 because that was really just like the topic of conversation was not just the ingredients but also Brands that came out with these high flown claims of being deserved of being the best new makeup brand and deserving their place in the market because they were different. But the only real difference, say beauty, was their promises. They didn't deliver on them. They said, we have plans to do refillable packaging. We have plans to do recyclable packaging. We have plans to use recycled materials for our packaging. But the fact is, most brands aren't willing to do it. Why? Because the recycled materials don't look as good. And you can see that, I'll show you. So these are two of Aether Beauty's recycled packages for their lip colors. This is the Radiant Ruby 
lip color, I think is what it's called. And this is the lip and cheek tint. One of the visual stumbling blocks that people come across with these is that they just kind of look like they've been rattling around in your collection for a long time. They look dirty compared to like, look at this UMA package, right? Clear, 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 and this looks cloudy. It's because it's recycled clear plastic. So until we as consumers can accept that this is still luxury, because this is where we find ourselves in the world of trying to be eco-conscious, we're just gonna be living in a world of promises, you know? But then there are people like Victoria Beckham, who's going to put something in glass or metal or something like that. Not always the easiest thing to recycle, but still better than virgin plastic. And I do think that for all of the brands that are backing away from it because they don't want to be held accountable to any kind of promises. And the other side of that, which are the brands that are making all of the promises or it's using smoke and mirrors very much like the RMS one, right? That's just a package within a package. It's like, no, that's just a foundation in a case. It's not actually like a reusable thing, you know? We need to find a, a middle ground somewhere and there needs to be a collective consensus that we care about it enough to compromise on our aesthetic needs for like you know crystal clear plastic and things like that there just has to be some kind of shift both in the consumer market and also in the conversation of you know on the brand's end because you can't tell me like that right there that's house labs you can't tell me she couldn't have done that with recycled plastic and maybe she did i don't know but like it's already frosted. If you just frost it, you probably wouldn't notice that it was like recycled plastic and that it wasn't crystal clear. Oh, I love this. Pretending to hate Taylor Swift, Harry Styles, maximalism, etc. I want to be loud and colorful and listen to pop music. I was just talking to my friend Robert about this. He was my best friend in college and he sent me this reel that probably started out as a TikTok because I'm 35. And it was a, like, where did all the hipsters go? they're a dying breed, you know, where did these ironic, you know, music aware, kind of better than everything hipsters go? Hi, we're right here, okay? But I, eventually you, A, have to let other things enter into your life, other people, other things that you care about, just, you can't be that self-centered all the time. In order to be a hipster, like a true hipster, you have to be so above everything that you have to also then be really aware of everything. And it requires a ton of work and a ton of, honestly, just like myopia. And when I encounter those kinds of people now as an adult, you know, people who somehow have survived to this age still hating everything, hating things more than they enjoy them, I'm just like, ugh, I don't wanna be around that. It just like radiates a waste of time to me. And so I realized I'm not a cinephile. I like watching pretty much anything with Paul Rudd in it. Like, I like stoner humor. Like, I, the, there are just things about me that I'm not gonna be snobby about, and I got tired of pretending. Like, do I like Harry Styles? Yeah, I do. I think his music is 75% pretty good, and I think he's super hot, and I find his music to be kind of a bop. I haven't gotten into Taylor Swift yet, but that's just like, you know, lack of time or whatever. But yeah, this like, this maximalism, this enjoying things, this like unbridled joy, like when did we become too good for that? It's almost like we lived in this age of decadence when I was in college and we had to start like, weeding things out. We were just like surrounded by so much stimulation that we were just like, oh, well, I have to wear only American apparel and pretend that like, you know, I'm better than shopping at Abercrombie and Fitch or, you know, better than like the sorority girls who are going out and getting drunk every night and said, I'm going to go to this bar and get drunk every night. Like no one's better. I think that when we're surrounded by our peers throughout school, we I start imagining this kind of looming specter of judgment that it's like someone's keeping score and the blessing of getting out of that is that no one's keeping score anymore and you can let your freak flag fly and that can mean being normal you're like oh no that's so mainstream it can be 
mainstream. Like it can mean being mainstream, at least in my case, or it can mean, you know, finally dressing and looking and talking and being how you want to. So yeah, I mean, I don't think that like maximalism or minimalism are like the enemy, but I do think that we're allowed to be a lot of things. And I don't know, I have like, we can touch on this briefly, but I have a lot of feelings about the whole like, be a minimalist by not shopping for your fantasy self. If you only live once, I'm out here to try and be my fantasy self, okay? Every single day. And it's gonna change, but like you'll never know unless you let that part of yourself breathe. And like this channel has allowed me so much to let that part of myself breathe that I find that creativity flows now in this really like beautiful, unjudgmental way that never would have happened if I hadn't just loosened the hell up, you know? Ha! <laughs> White people stealing brown slash black girl aesthetics and making them TikTok trends all shade. Exactly. You said it better than I did. I spent a really long time saying that, but like Hailey Bieber is a huge perpetrator of it, but all of TikTok is, okay? Giant platforms a la Prada, Versace, etc. No one's making you buy them. No one's making you buy them. I love me some giant platforms. I don't think that they have any referendum on body types or anything like that. They're just weird, okay? <laughs> Anti-Semitism, what is this, 1938? Like, I, yeah, it's, it's like stuff is just, I, I mean, I honestly, I'm not enough of a sociologist. Okay, let's be real, I'm not a sociologist, but I'm not a student of sociology enough to like tell you why. Or like, you know what I mean? To understand why something like that comes back around as like a social phenomenon. But all I can say is, what the hell? <laughs> Stop it. This is wild. This is wild. Y'all hate Dewey. And you know what? I get it because if you have oily skin and everything that's popular and getting attention on channels that you like to watch is Dewey, it's kind of like when Coachella happens. I'm like, suddenly all the things that I subscribe to are no longer interesting to me because none of this is interesting to me. I am not interested in festival fashion. I am not interested in going to music festivals anymore. I'm not interested in crowds. I did it. And like, that's fine. It's fine that it exists. I just don't want it on my feed anymore. And so I get it that you don't want everything to be Dewey because you never liked it in the first place and you feel like everybody else made a collective decision that this is what everybody likes now and now they're not making anything for you anymore. Yeah. I get that. Yeah, we could use a, a, like a gravitational pull back towards not, like I said, Jaclyn Hill, you know, frozen mask of makeup looking like you're going to your wedding every single day, unless that's your truth. But if there was a time period where we were, you know, all just using Fenty Pro Filter and that was a little bit frustrating for people with dry skin and like there needs to be enough for everybody. And it's wild to even say that in an environment where I feel like we have just reached capacity on makeup, period, end of story, you know? But there can be things that are hydrating without being dewy. And honestly, I feel like we have graduated past it to the point where it's like, you look at something like Sublimage Le Tain. I know I'm, I'm a broken record, but like you can have hydrating without super dewy and it does make you realize that hydrating alongside super dewy and them kind of being considered one and the same it's sort of a lazy unimaginative solution isn't it because i want long wearing and i want something that makes my skin look really pretty all the time not conditionally so i'm gonna put something different on my lips because this is wild i'm gonna put on harmony this is from Aether. Celebrity beauty brands, mostly ones that are clear money grabs. I totally agree, but we, we live in a society, okay? They're gonna, that, that's how celebrities got rich, is through money grabs. Bangs, I don't think you're gonna get that left behind. People are always going to have identity crises and go and get bangs cut. And some people look absolutely divine with them and they are the solution, not the problem, but there are very few of us. Mushrooms. 
Do y'all, are you talking about like microdosing or are you just talking about mushrooms as an aesthetic? Because they don't bother me one way or the other. <laughs> Thinking anyone over 30 has to give a about what the youth think and is cringe. Cringe came up so much in this from y'all being like, I am so tired of basically being called cringe because I'm a millennial. Like, okay, y'all know I, I have this thing that I'm passionate about and it's called strategic disappointment. And I think that when we're called cringe, it bugs us because we were the last generation before this to be cool and suddenly being not approved of feels unfair but i want to take a different spin on that because we are still relevant and we're still part of the conversation and obviously this is you know a dynamic like i said that happens all the time between generations but i think we are unique in the sense that we're still young enough to be part of the conversation, especially online because the trends are coming around so quickly. And so it's like, okay, you're cringe. Okay, but also I'm here to scare the hell out of you. I love, I love that, I guess it's a TikTok where, you know, the girl is like, stop using boomerang. You have to stop. And she's sitting in her like minimalist bedroom or whatever. And like this millennial girl in a hoodie is like leaned back with her phone in her face. And she's like, we live rent free in y'all's brains. All you do is complain about us. And then you dress like us. <laughs> so yeah, I don't think that we're going to leave that in 2022. But at the same time, I want to reclaim it like we reclaim so many other pejoratives. Like, I am cringe all day long, okay? My kid was born thinking that I was uncool. I truly believe that there is some kind of genetic predisposition towards that. I sing, I dance, I do anything. He goes, literally a two-year-old goes, no. So I have moved into the phase of my life where I am just here to scare the hell out of the youths, okay? Join the coven. Half shirts, we're back in half shirts. Everybody's so mad at crop tops. <laughs> Crypto, okay, one of my favorite, I guess it was a tweet, I think Kate the Great published it, but I can't remember, it was like, it was during the Super Bowl and there were all these commercials for crypto being like, you know, uh, it's real. <laughs> Don't be stupid and miss out on it. It's definitely real. And it was this tweet that was like, you know, all these crypto bros trying to convince me that crypto is money, you still can't reconcile the fact that no one makes commercials for money. <laughs> no one's out here advertising money. And you realize that it's just a gigantic MLM, okay? Ooh, 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 falsies. You know, I kind of feel like we already left falsies somewhere. So yeah, falsies being false eyelashes, it's just something that I stopped doing before I even get, like officially started Khaki Reviews Beauty as a channel in 2018 because they just always look ridiculous on me unless I'm at like an event where I'm being photographed. I think that they serve a purpose when you're being photographed because things get lost, you know? And for me, you know, I wore them to my wedding or to like photo shoots and stuff like that before my wedding because it helps you be able to see your eyelashes. But other than that, like right here on camera, girl, it just looks like I'm wearing fake eyelashes and to each their own, y'all do what you're gonna do, but they are so much work. They're so much work and they're so annoying. They're like wearing contact lenses on your entire eye. It's just like, bleh, I don't know, I can't. People who wear contact lenses and falsies, you know what, you're a triumph of the human spirit, okay? Much respect. All right, we need to get into this long string of grievances that were vented by my skin trust. She says, everything from TikTok, agree. Hailey Bieber pretending skincare is makeup, Okay, brands that have awful products but we still like them because aesthetic, example, say, preach, skin tints with sunscreens in them, preach. Also, sorry, skincare drops need to leave forever. Skincare is healthcare. So, all of that is kind of part of the same idea and that is this like trending skincare thing of saying like, oh, get it while it's hot and then 
It's just shrinking off the supply, you know, like it's a, a, a new iPhone in 2008 or something. And you know, you you want the press of having a long line, like a wait list. Oh, are things sold out? La, la, la. This is after Hailey Bieber freaking steamrolled Rode, the brand. She knows can't afford to sue them. And so she was like, hey, can we buy your brand? And they were like, no. And she was like, <laughs> I'm gonna do it anyway because I'm an entitled little princess. And she has just continued. And everybody on TikTok never calls it into question or anything. And so she's out here not only not following any respectful rules of decency and starting her brand, but she's the one that's constantly stealing from black and brown trends and saying that she invented them. And she's treating skincare like it's some kind of like hot commodity that is going to change your life, but only a few of you can get it. Like, no, no, that's, it is, it's BS. And like, we need to break the spell, okay? Honestly, that might be my phrase of the year of 2023, break the spell. Okay, let's break the spell because there's a lot of beauty magic out there, but I think that all of it, if it's going to deserve your hard earned dollars, needs to survive the process of breaking the spell. It has to rise above that. You need to be able to break the spell and still love it. Cold girl or anything with TikTok derived name, kill it with fire. I totally agree. Stop trying to make everything a thing. Just stop trying to make everything a thing. We have renamed Dewy Skin 16 different ways from Sunday, okay? And I know it's six ways from Sunday, but it's 1600 ways from Sunday as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I think that like TikTok is just so unabashedly oblivious to the conversations that have already been had and they need a history lesson. And we need to stop preoccupying ourselves with them just because it's what's cool with the youths. All right. This is, this is the one that I've been waiting to get off my chest and y'all came in with flying colors on this. And I love that this is starred out because I don't even want to say the word either. The return of and chic can dip the out early. I will say what Carrie Dayton says, your body is not a trend. Your body is not a trend, but I'm going to go even further than that because I think that there's a lot of talk about like encouragement and positivity or even just being able to like cope with the changes of your body without talking about the realities of what happens when you decide to ignore that. Because honestly, it's so present, it can poison your brain in the smallest of ways and it can kind of like metastasize and all of the body positivity turns into this like clarion call of, yes, but I'm going to defy that. You know, it's like, okay, well that's what other girls do, but I'm better than that, okay? Let me go ahead and give a reality check for everybody who feels that way because I was the queen of it, okay? Of feeling special because I thought that the rules didn't apply to me. I was like, yes, you can talk all day long about how the magazines and the catalogs and the models on the runway perpetuate an unrealistic set of standards for a body type, but I'm the exception and I'm going to look like that whatever it takes. And you know what happens? You become the unhappiest person in the world. There was a quote that uh, Danae Mercer said, it's not a dream body if it's a nightmare to maintain. When you stop eating, when you starve yourself and you think that you're in control, that's the first big trick. You think you're in control. The first thing that happens is you have to ignore a lot of your hunger cues. And that's really hard, but it's doable, okay? And what's on the other side of that is your body stops giving you hunger cues because it's going into a starvation mode where it's trying to conserve. So you think, oh, I'm free from my body telling me I'm hungry. You know, now I can do whatever I want. False. What the reality is, is now you have taken something that you're entire nervous system, your body, your nature, biology, and all of its countless billions of moving parts has always been able to do on its own. And you're gonna try and manage it inside your own goofy human brain on a daily basis. You're gonna wake up in the morning and the first thing you're gonna think about is food and calories. And that's the only thing you're gonna think about 
all the time. Putting sugar in your coffee is gonna scare you. Putting cream in your coffee is gonna scare you. Making your sandwich with mayonnaise is going to scare you. The whole world becomes terrifying. You are in a prison of your own making and it is your brain and your body. It is lying in bed with depression. It's not being able to do anything because you haven't given your body any fuel and it's constantly hating the way that you look. It doesn't fix anything. It makes it so much worse. Eat. Don't let anybody tell you that the answer is starving yourself because it is not. Be a happy person. Happy people eat. So the headlines coming out saying that this body type is back, claiming that they're just posing a question or chronicling something that's happening in fashion is so insidious and so disgusting. And I think that the same problem that we're talking about on TikTok, where they are trying to reinvent trends that we've already passed and calling them their idea because they're not students of history in any respect, because they're really young and it all happened before they were, you know, automatons in most cases. That being the state of things means that the same things that caught us by the throats can do that to them too. So the entire conversation has to change. The entire narrative has to change. And the people who have lived through it in this particular case have to be louder in calling out the bullshit for what it is, because that's what it is, than the people telling you that your body is a trend, because otherwise the message isn't going to get through and we're going to have another generation of miserable people. So I feel very passionately about that. And I think that what needs to be injected into the conversation is actually the consequences, because I think that all of the positivity around it can become this sort of like static of what you want to defy because what becomes the aesthetic is actually like restraint and misery and being unhappy. And it becomes this kind of like wounded, I'm doing it because it hurts kind of thing. And positivity can't penetrate that. What you need to know is that you deserve better than that, period. You deserve to enjoy your life. You deserve to wake up with energy. You deserve to have your body tell you that you're hungry and have your body tell you that you're full. Anyway, yeah, I, that, oof, that got deep. I'm gonna have to put a trigger warning on this video. <laughs> Um, and I'll just put like timestamps or whatever, but yeah, that be, that needs to go. That needs to go. We're done. Collabs with IP that betray a lack of creativity as a brand and usually a lack of quality also. Amen. You can't get me with character makeup. Being a bigot. Yeah, it's not going anywhere. Some people just wear it like a badge of honor. Wolf cuts. They don't suit very many people and they are a pain to grow out. Okay, but like, you don't have to follow a trend. Like no one, no one is, no one's making you get a wolf cut and they're funny to watch. Short form content on sites not designed for it. I forget who I was talking to, but they were saying that like YouTube is going to absorb it. They're going to shut TikTok down eventually and it's going to all live on one platform. And that just is what it is. So watch what you like. And that completes at least y'all's responses and my thoughts on the trends that we need to leave in 2022. To leave anything else that you're thinking about down below, be kind, be considerate, and I hope that y'all found this valuable and a good, a good way to spend your time. <laughs> and thank y'all so much for taking the time out of your days to respond so thoughtfully to my prompts because most of this video was, if it was valuable, it was valuable because of y'all. So thank you for that. I will stick another video up here for you to enjoy. If you made it to the end of this video, you should probably subscribe. You, you watched the whole thing and this is the essence of this channel. I upload a lot. So, you know, you'll, you'll have a lot to watch if you subscribe. And if you did enjoy it, I hope you'll leave a like as well. I want to thank you all for watching. I love you so much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.